Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday, and we're reading in uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 9. Oh, verse 8. Let me, let's just go over one more time. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Substitute. Substitute. Can't earn it. Got to put your faith in the one who died on the cross for you. Verse 9. Since we have now been justified by his blood, How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Since he forgave all of our sins through his blood. So let's just stop there. Christianity, the Bible itself, is a very bloody book, isn't it? In the Old Testament, if you got near the camp of Israel, morning and night, morning sacrifice, evening sacrifice, trespass offering, this kind of offering, anything to do with sin, blood had to be shed. For God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Imagine how it smelled and all that blood. Now we come to the New Testament and we learn that the blood of animals and goats has no power to forgive sin. That was a temporary provision under the law Everything under the law just about was just temporary. Circumcision, Saturday of Sabbath, um, all kinds of things like that. Only, only Jewish people are God's chosen and all that. Those were just temporary. We move into a new day, the new covenant. And uh, no eating pork, no eating all these things, temporary, temporary. With Christ, all foods become legitimate. Aren't you happy? The New Testament now says that all those animals were just types and shadows of the great Lamb of God. That's what John the Baptist called him when he just saw him. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. How does he take away the sins of the world? Through the shedding of his blood. Blood meaning life. The life is in the blood. He gave his life for you and I. Let's love him more today, just as we think of that. He shed his blood. Ooh, I don't want a religion like that. No? Well, you have whatever religion you want. I'll stick and trust in this one. The blood has never lost its power. Did you know it reaches to the highest mountain? Goes to the lowest valley. The blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. To a, a, a secular person who does not, who's unspiritual, doesn't understand anything, they must think that's nuts to walk into a building and hear thousands of people singing, oh, the blood of Jesus. But we know, don't we? We know the peace, the assurance of pardon that that blood brings. How much more than when God sends his wrath on those who don't believe in him, will we be saved through that same Jesus? For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled, to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? The fact that he came out from the dead, he was resurrected, and that life is now working in us. Is that life working in you? Has the Holy Spirit borne witness with your spirit that you're a child of God, not a churchgoer, not holding doctrinal positions, but a born-again, spirit-dwelling abode? person. That's what a Christian is. Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. All this boasting, what are we rejoicing in? People rejoice in money and property and values and how smart they are. And Paul said, no, we boast in the cross. We boast in the blood we boast that we have access to all the grace of God. We boast that he's doing a process in our lives. Suffering develops perseverance. Perseverance develops character. When he comes, we're not going to be 
uh, I, um, objects of wrath and punishment because God is going to punish people in the end. You know that, right? Do you believe in all the Bible or just some of it? Are we going to pick and choose our verses? We're going to be saved from his wrath. The Bible talks about a day where God is going to punish those who have mocked him. Glory not only in sin, but encourage people to practice more of it. There's a day of reckoning, obviously, if you believe the Bible. But we're going to be saved for that, saved from that. Why? Because, listen, I've gone to church so many years. No, 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 no. You know how many messages I've preached? Now, for real. I've been doing this for decades. I've been averaging five meetings a week, even, even vacations, but going to speak at conferences, four or five meetings a week for decades. Certainly when God sees that, he's going to say, no, do not punish him. Take him in. No. We have reconciliation with God through faith only in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus satisfies. Only Jesus' blood washes away sin. Be an only Jesus person. Be a Jesus only, only Jesus person. In the best sense of that phrase. Jesus. There's something about that name. Jesus. Jesus. You know what happiness is? Is just living close to Jesus. Not running here, there, and everywhere. Just being close to Jesus. Some of the sweetest moments of my life have been when I've been lonely and under pressure. And I'm just with Jesus. I trust Jesus. I meditate on Jesus. I rejoice in what he's done. If you're not a Jesus person yet today, why don't you become one? I don't have 11 things for you to do. Just confess your sin and say, Jesus, have mercy, and you'll be a Jesus person. That's it, just confess sin. Don't promise anything, don't promise. Just say, I believe. Lord, I believe. I believe you died as a substitute for me and your blood washes away all my sin. I received that forgiveness and I put you on the throne of my life, my heart. I trust you, Jesus, amen. Have a great day. Thank you.